Walk outside. You're right. Summer. Um, two steps. You just come by. Yeah. Uh, it's high in, in the pictures and really enjoy uh, talking to this group. Uh, uh, every time we get together, uh, what am I doing talking about sheep? Uh, that wasn't an introduction, but conditions of convinced North Carolina State University in, in our home university, uh, and so. I had an opportunity to work with a RCND to manage our pasture for increased drought tolerance. In, in the title of my talk is Reacting to a Changing Climate, Managing Pastures for Increased Drought Tolerance. So we just finished up and then in a final report, and we just want to let folks know uh, what happened. And um, Roger's sort of be a check for me to. to um, if to, to, to tell you what actually really happened, is that sheep meals in the atmosphere yeah. over the about um, co grazing sheep with cattle. In, in we, interesting we practice, yeah. it's a sick pattern. They go kind of different. Um, we were awarded a, a interesting about innovation grant. It isn't until reach usually when you, when you have compared about 50 uh, that, that we start to see these things, things exceed 200 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere. In, in this, uh, probably close to uh, a evaluation uh, uh, that was put in to fund the reactive practice. So it's a little bit different. Uh, thing that has a system in decision making that you use is temperature. We can produce or probably want to make. You know, it, it was 2 degrees Celsius. This is our good option in West Virginia. Um, if we look was that about at the uh, landscape lays, we have really, uh, um, you know, undulating topography. We have unutilized forage um, that, that uh, our, our cattle operations, we, we tend to have to mow off. It's a dangerous activity. Um, or we have to spray Massachusetts hey. Institute hey. that are uh, blanket sprays that impact uh, favorable species along with the weed species that we're controlling. Um, not doing a lot of good. So that was probably the of this And then I made a prediction that it's going to happen in the first two years of this century. And but why does nobody do with zero? No. Um, we, we have. We have the last sentence. And uh, the reason be right here, this I have a green slope. It's red. Because we're going to have a drought. It's it goes towards the green side. It means the number one thing is what I'm, I took away from the program is uh, the, the, program program. the reasons include even a spread of drought across the country. What? <laughs> 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 And that's I'm going to take my food sample. So luckily, when I'm feeding my my hay out, practices that deal with with small ruminants that you don't have to deal with uh, of this century. How much faith do you put in this? I mean, we can't get the weather. So I encourage each and every you have access to years out. Get a hold of your local. And they how, how true this actually comes. The sample. Yes. Those are those are. The Cultural prejudice, cattlemen being here in the social sphere. And the well, well, so, the main thing is, you know, um, so it's, it's, yeah. it's just, it's just, it is. Um, it's a tough sell. So, but uh, the, we, we looked at a piece of technology, systems. Um, afford a, a producer because a lot of times people say, well, I just can't keep sheep in. You know, my fences are enough. Um, and also, with these electric networks are very keeping predators at bay. The neighbor's dogs, the first coyote, the main um, uh, predators for plants, small livestock. Process. Process. Talk a little bit about the morphs are available. 
uh, can train structure the plant gets a grow as a grow up beard or does it grow up straight to does it have stolons and rise or what kind of root system does it have physical so what we wanted to look at is what morphology means grazing up you know how these two things what things in the morphology of the plant interact together over the how we share finishing that plant by grazing so in the Thank you. So I, I always like to start out and um, talk a little bit about what we commonly consider the smallest part of the plant, and that's the plant cell. But in reality, even within the cells, we have what we call um, we, the uh, cells are, are, are very specific structures within that plant that have specific functions. And we're not going to talk about all the organelles of the plant today because we don't have any time. But what we are going to talk about is a few key structures. The first key structure I'm going to talk about is the vacuole. And the vacuole in the cell is this large structure. And this can take up about 80% of the cell volume. Um, and we can continue evacuating that it maintains turgor pressure in that plant. Now, and you're saying what's turgor pressure? Turgor pressure is that what keeps the plant rigid and upright. We get into a drought and that plant starts to wilt. We lose turgor Now, the way the, the vacuole does that, if we think of this as our cell, in, in the cell walls are not quite actually like this rigid plastic. They're kind of like a canvas bag almost. So they're kind of a semi-rigid structure. If, if we think of that ecosystem cell, the way the back we got to in front it actually inside that plant. The, the change in pasture the species, um, you know, can, the, can the animals, can the sheep, affect a change in pasture composition over a three-year period. Um, we, we, we evaluated with uh, co cooperators, per, you know, the when we undergo a drought, that's what happens is we don't have enough water to keep this vacuole inflated. And as we lose the turgor pressure, the plant builds. And, and we're going to talk about how the plant responds to grazing to their the drought a lot more as we get into this talk. The other structures I just want to mention are blast. Get into that blast because it, it contains the machinery to carry out photosynthesis that. within the cell. And we talk about problems. And then the whole you know, also called the ply co grays. Um, you know, we have a lot of um, these kind of broadleaf energy so that in a craft um, and, and are readily used. Synthesis. Photosynthesis is a sheep, and you're going back. the old standard was you can drop one in for every set of cattle and have synthesis absolutely by far impact them on earth. And in this process, we take our energy from the sun and we convert it into chemical in the plant. And we do that with the following equation. On so those carbon dioxide from the air, we take a look at soil and we and what's happened over time out west, um, as our sheep numbers have gone down, uh, our cattle numbers and the whole price lands, uh, we've also, over the last, there's two major photosynthetic pathways that we find somewhere for that, that's the C3 pathway, which we find in our cool season grass. C3 comes from the first acid formed in the photosynthetic process has up with 3C yet. Facts is you know acid. you have a cattle you have a study carrying out photosynthesis at three hundred point if you if you uh, add sheep in a in a leaf temperature it's around seventy degrees in a in a uh, ecological balance or you're not pushing the past the past to the week and in the fall. Two, not much for the livestock for the carrying capacity of the land. We were really careful about um, did what happens in the summer if it if it is there, um, you know, you can get greater output of livestock per acre and decreased growth of luminous synthesis. Uh, the practice has declined. And and uh, a C4 or a warm season grass. Conservationists are fit, um, carrying out photosynthesis. They don't reach photosynthesis until around 90 degrees. Uh, 
activity. Uh, there's much more phrases that have gone out of our, our, um, our, you know, the things that we talk about to just the land. And that's because their growth does not capture limited certain of increased macronutrient you know. What happens is that um, you have you, you have underutilized forage that's actually harvested, um, and then that's well, that formula photosynthesis people's plays of and turn themselves off. So I, I like to use a little cartoon model. As if the cows do, and that everything else goes dormant, so those nutrients and those we think utilized. Um, plants are not available. So having more mouths to feed, um, not increasing producing your sugars. Um, you know, you're, it, it's, it's shown to buffer uh, pH. You have higher soil respiration values. That means more microbial activity because there's for the bugs to eat. And there's increases in earthworms and rotifers. And again, that's Plant. And then that um, go to the more readily available new use a small room in the room or that are coming on that picture. And so there is there is an increased dry uh production acre. You are sixty four you sort of give it up your your give it by adding an address is that in the um livestock but up to the pasture system. It's growth and maybe you have better long season Outlet. So first, the growth and the maintenance needs, energy needs of that plant has to stay in a vegetative state. When we have excess that carbohydrates being produced, do the energy life cycle flowers and then that's it. So uh, you know, I, I have a few years and I, I watch them eat broad leaves and they will, they will wrap um, eat can weeds for regrowth after defoliation. Actively growing all summer long. So keeping that warehouse as full as we have of graze is very important in terms of species on the in building a robustness into We talked about utilizing rejected forage. Um, there is some some uh, um, data that shows there is a two kinds of grasses, and Ozzy kind of covered this yesterday in her, her lecture. Two, we have a, um, a bunch of orchard grass and fescue the kind of benefit of wealth. It looks like a nice shot. Your system. More research needs to be done on that. So, so we started with, our, we intended to, to get 20 farmers. And, and we can look at a plant, we don't even have to be in a fat, we can tell the gene stuck through it. So, we can write like, it's probably you know, going to be a little um, tolerant. That just goes to show you how hard it is for a lot of that plant safely below the type of which is going to be much more than the federal of the country. Um, we, had, oh, we, we had real good attendance at our workshop. And then to finish out, we, we, uh, we went and we did a, um, a we used a standard NRCS, just a soil carbon assessment process. And we picked four farms. And we went and we looked at um, a, a specific hay and a pasture field. And hopefully what we can do is sort of develop a, a starting point for their soil carbon. And over time, we'll go back and look at it and see if there is um, any changes on that pasture and hay fields in the next five and 10 years. Um, and then we did a lot of e exit interview. Uh, with these 15 recruits, did they already have sheep or was? No. That's the dominant route that goes down with our branches. And we, we had makes that outlier. We added one uh, operation that had sheep but didn't have cattle, and we said, we'll buy some What are the things that makes so much more drought than a, than a grass? The other thing I wanted, the other to finish up with uh, an exit interview process with the farmers and those and stolons. And we find these. 
you know, modify them that you wrote to highlight your surface. Sorry. I give you modify them for what you wrote above this little surface. Because they abbreviation of my this one. Yes. Hybrids. So this year's been much better. The lambing season was, was tighter, and, uh, and a lot of those problems, I, I called a lot of those use uh, that weren't working with my operation. But anyway, as far as the fencing went, dealing with the fencing, uh, I think I've been better off to add one more strand of high tensile lower and not use the net fencing except for uh, during lambing time. It really does work to keep the dogs out. I haven't really had much of a coyote issue, but it is a pain to move that fence around, especially while the grass is growing, because if you don't move it regularly, the uh, grass will grow under that 
bottom uh, horizontal wire or two, and then it's really, really hard to pull back out. So that was an issue moving it, getting tangled up. Animals getting tangled in it was a problem. So, horse, horses chewing on it. We also had two, or three horses. <coughs> that was a problem of what's not electrified and what's not electrified. <coughs> The pros that I had were they, they did eat a lot of broadleaf broad weeds in the pasture. Uh, we had a lot of wing stem and iron weed, and they seemed to really take care of that well. Uh, didn't have too much road, multiple roads in my pasture, but they did what little was there, they did work on it. Uh, they did not eat uh, coarse metal or burdock or those kind of things. Uh, they were very easy to move. Uh, all I'd have to do is shake a little green bucket and they'd come wherever I wanted to go. Um, and they don't make much mud, which is an issue this time of year with the cattle. And they don't eat a whole lot of hay. <clears throat> and one of the best things as far as in our operation, like we have two young daughters and they're uh, timid around the cattle, but they like to help with the sheep. So they stomp wool and they help uh, with the worm and those kind of things. So I guess my take home message if I was talking to someone who wanted to try this would be to uh, be realistic about your time management because it does take a lot of extra time to uh, manage an extra enterprise. And don't be afraid to ask someone uh, who's got some experience to help you. So that's all I have to say. Any questions? Buttercups eat, uh, yes, they do. But, uh, I didn't have much, but I, I do notice that in the horse pasture. And, and, uh, yeah, they eat mm -hmm. That's right. I'm not sure about that. Did you freeze them simultaneously? We left it up to them and, and to each producer whether they wanted to um, let the, the sheep take the take the best and let the cows come in later, um, uh, co-graze or uh, graze after the cattle. We left, it, we left a lot of management <coughs> decisions up to individual farmers so that they could come back and tell us what their, their best method. What did, what did you do, Brian? I found it varied throughout the year. During the actual grazing season, they were separate. Uh, fall of the year, they were together during lambing and calving time they were separate. So. What did you do for minerals while they were together? Together they just ate sheep mineral. Is what I did. What about water when you just have them in separate? For the sheep? Yeah, and then they... Uh, I have uh, watering troughs throughout my pasture, so I did have to put some rocks over the sheep to climb up the ridges. There was already existing water. Yeah, I always try to make sure that the trough is How much men? How big is the men? How big is the men? It varied. Uh, I tried to make sure they had at least a week and a half before the grazing because it takes so much time for me with a full time job to get around the movement. How much time for men? Yes, it's for men. I had, went through the project, I had enough to enclose 20 acres. I never put that much effort on I could. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a lot of that. Actually, I still had boxes that I didn't wear. My, my thought was that I would use to, uh, to the point where it wasn't working, but I'd still have some that would last me several years. So it, it is problematic to, to keep up the you know, maintain, you know, you've got, you know, the other part was that we, we uh, used, used the incentive money for the farmers to buy a, a really robust um, energizer because you need a good amount of, of electricity going through that, that net fence because there is a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of opportunity for that, that, that fencing system to short out. So, you know, you can't lowball your, your energizer. Um, and that was something that I, on my own, I purchased a Stay Fix energizer, which is uh, a, I forget the rules on that, 
but anyway, it has a remote where I can go out and turn the fence off at any point on the fence, which is very handy with this kind of fence to be able to do that. So I, I, I use I use nap pants and um, periodically go on vacation and, and my neighbor has told me that he's come over the, the, the hill and seen the, the uh, use in the back field and a coyote running up and down along the fence but, but just respecting it to where they won't jump it and they won't try to go through it because they've been bit by it. You know, um, so it's it's uh, um, it's a nice barrier. It do, it's it's not perfect. Uh, you know, uh, in real wet soils, it'll tend to fall over. If you try to use it in winter time with wet snows, it'll get drugged down. Yeah, the, um, yeah, the snow in October took all of it down. Yeah, and, and, and then then they'll walk. You know, at that point, especially if. Uh, um, if you restrict them or just move them or haven't moved them and things get knocked down and, and they don't respect it. Um, if it's been up for a while, a lot of times it can fall over and they still have that fear and, and they won't go near it. So. I found the sheep tied up to the sheep we brought up to the cow house, you know, the cow home. Part of this, we have a sort of a, um, a long narrative on pros and cons by individual farmers and 
So yeah, it's it's. Uh, um, sure. Sure. And so you know, in the the next step with this is to now go to um, NRCS or or agencies. Um, Department of Ag or, or, or conservation agencies and, and say, hey, this, this is a, an opportunity for farmers to improve their pasture ecology, you know, not be on their tractors mowing so much, uh, improve their, their forage base. Can we offer a, 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 a incentive crop program to um, add sheep? Uh, they, they have biocontrol of, um, of of weedy species uh, using this net fence currently under their um, uh, pest management uh, incentive program. So this would be a little bit, a little bit different, but still, you know, uh, a possibility. This ag enhancement, this, uh, well, it's with the lime program, state lime program. Now it has a fencing program. But I'm not sure whether, do you, Roger, know whether this net fencing would be included in that or not? Uh, not in our district, I don't know about it. It's, 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 it's not in our district. I guess it would be, I guess it would be left up to the district. It's what they want. So it's not considered permanent fence, and so from a, from a incentive program, they're not going to um, cost you. We've already done goats, so uh, you know um, we, we've done a previous uh, CIG and we have <coughs> looked at uh, biologically controlling weeds, and um, we we just thought let's let's sort of move away from from the weed management focus and sort of take it out to a, to a more of a pasture pasture health um, uh, focus, and, and we wanted a real challenge.
and we have to use more strands. And it also seems to have uh, stopped some of the neighborhood dogs very nicely. But with that little extra space in between the wires, we used to have to use that erased fence, and then you could see them flip over the hot wire. They would not touch the ground. With double wire, they can't do that. So, um, utilization of, of uh, uh, avoided or uh, ignored forage due to um, preferences from species. So it's just pure, you know, there's some things that are just not going to be eaten by cattle. You know, period. Like iron weeds for, for one. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, I have sheep and I don't know how many years ago it's been. I hadn't had sheep in this pasture field for ages. And it was growing up with iron weeds. It took them about three years. I don't have a one in there now. They, they clean it.
Did you vaccinate your sheep? I have Wilshire horns, which is a rare breed, and they're about 600 bucks a pop. I was not impressed. <laughs> so I vaccinated. <laughs> but he said there is a virus that for some reason will enhance the PI3 in the sheep. And literally when he posted them, the whole side of the lung cavity was gone. And it's stank. something that we didn't talk about, but it is a benefit. And so um, how you choose to graze um, is, is, a, is, a, is a, a way to deal with um, uh, you know, the, the parasite load on your, your pasture. So if you, if you graze the sheep first and have the cattle clean up, um, they can actually uh, destructively reduce the numbers through, their, through the cattle grazing of the sheep forms. And so, um, you know, in the pecking order, um, you know, of, of how you graze, you, you can affect uh, your parasite burden. Um, so, so, yeah, that's a, another added benefit that we didn't talk about. The sheep be called or grass.
next phrase. Yeah, so we're speaking to the choir, except for this calendar. <laughs> <laughs> body burden thing. It's like, you know, if you have a large animal, it can take a it can take a certain amount of uh, burden from a from a blood cycle. I don't, I don't know if anyone can say for sure that that helped. Uh, I actually purchased a donkey, and so I, I would assume I would it helped with that. See, that's another complication, is, is, is protection animals. So then you go to like, you go to a dog, or you go to a llama, or, you know. Um, and so, again, it's, it's, all, it's all management that you have to add.
Nothing else. That, that's another sort of added benefit that uh, it looks like we have uh, more and more diverse population that is interested in, in, in that, that type of food. Um, so hopefully prices, and even wool prices have been pretty good for. But you know, we found that our our starting group um, predominantly went with hair sheep, went with cottons. And um, if, if you are if you are uh, uh, looking to, to start a starter block, not a, not a bad way to go. Uh, you don't have the hearing problems. There is some field resistance to um, parasites, so they seem to have some better ability to survive. Uh,